we mentioned core vitals again. This is also a big one. Core vitals was actually introduced by Google in the mid 2020. Um, and it's basically a set of metrics that they use to evaluate the user experience of a website. So not only is it important to them, they have metrics that they actually told website owners, you have to hit these metrics in order for this to be considered a good site, a usable, user-friendly site. And what they said in their announcement was users show they prefer sites with a great page experience. And that signal measures aspects of how users perceive the experience of interacting with a web page. Optimizing for these factors make the web more delightful for users across all web browsers and services and help sites evolve towards user expectations on mobile. That's strictly a quote from Google's release of that back in May of 2020. Now, it is going to be key. We've talked about it. Number one thing was user experience, right? This is from Google. Google said they're going to, they're combining the signals that they derive from these new core web vitals, well, their current core web vitals, with their existing search signals for page experience, which includes, is it mobile friendly? Is it safe to browse? Is it secure? Do you have any pop-ups that are causing problems? Because we continue to work on identifying and measuring aspects of page experience. They plan to incorporate more page experience signals on a yearly basis to further align with these evolving user expectations and increase the aspects of user experience that they can measure. So Google is proactive in finding more and more ways to measure the experience a user is having. What's the latest on this? Well, there's three primary ones that we've been using for a while since 2020. You have something called LCP, which is the largest contentful paint. This is basically the load time for the main content on a web page. Sometimes it's an image, a big block of text, maybe it's a video, but whatever the biggest thing is to load, how what's the timing for that? Ideal LCP measurement is 2.5 seconds or less, right? Faster. First input delay is FID. This measures the response time to a user's first interaction with a page. So if you ever got on a web page, and you see the menu, or you see a button that you want to click on, and you click on it, and, the, and it doesn't work. You click on it, or you tap it, and tap it, and it doesn't work. That's first input delay, right? There's a delay between when the site loads and when you can actually interact with it. And they're recommending that that first input delay is less than 100 milliseconds. So it's got to be super fast, okay? And this captures the experience when trying to interact with a page. If you're, like, frustrated with it, you might go back. You might think it's broken or whatever. And then cumulative layout shift is another one. This is when the elements on the page kind of shift positions unexpectedly. You see a lot of this on like some of the websites where, you know, they're, 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 they have a lot of advertising on it. And you go to click on a button and then an image pops up or another button pops up or some ad pops up and pushes everything down. That's causing a layout shift. And we don't like it, right? We wind up clicking on things you don't want to go to. We have to go back. It's frustrating. It causes accidental clicks or makes it harder to kind of interact with the website because you have to wait for something to load before you can you know, find it. And they are looking for this cumulative layout shift of 0.1 or lower. So if you fail in any one of those things, you're not going to be seen as having a really useful website. So you've got to really check these things. You know, If you are failing core vitals, you're likely going to be really not doing well organically in the rankings. Now, there is an update coming, which is interesting. FID is going away. And... They're not calling it called interaction to next paint, INP. This is replacing this FID as first interaction. And this is going to be measuring responsiveness to a user's actions throughout their visit to the page. So as they scroll, does it, does it cause a problem? As they click on things, does it cause a problem? When can they first? So it's kind of all the interactions, not just the first interaction. So it's a broader metric that accounts for the full range of how we interact on a website and how that website responds in return to how you're interacting with it. This is coming in March. And you can find out your own Core Web Vitals by going to um, uh, your Google Search Console. And over on the left under Experience, you'll find Core Web Vitals. Again, if you're a new site, you don't have enough data, you might not see anything in here, or it might be very limited. In this case here, I had to go to one of my other clients. And this will give you the report on how you're doing on mobile, how you're doing on desktop. You definitely want mobile to be good. You see with this one, there's zero good URLs at the moment, 11 poor URLs, and most of them need improvement. And so you can look for these issues and fix these user experiences by looking at what Google's showing you. When you click on open the report, it will give you the opportunity to see what needs improvement, right? And you can see, hey, there's 
222 images that need improvement. So you can click on, I can't do it here, this is a picture. If you click on that, opens up and it gives you some basic ideas of which URLs are having this issue. It doesn't give you all URLs, it kind of gives you a sampling of URLs saying that these are all kind of related. So maybe you have the same issue on all your blog posts. It's not gonna show you every blog post. It's gonna show you the blog and a few of them. And then shows you which ones are having a problem with um, longer than four seconds on mobile. And you can go in and fix these things. So you want to go in there. They don't show you all URLs I mentioned, but you do want to keep in mind that you, if you have enough traffic to your site, if you don't have enough traffic, they're not going to show you anything. And that's when you really got to go to those testing tools to figure out where the problem is. But uh, if you do have great information, take a look at it. It's really good. This is also now in Core Web. Uh, it's the first time I saw this was today. As I mentioned, this INP is replacing FID. So they are starting to kind of give you, this goes below that, a little bit more information about this F, uh, uh, excuse me, INP and where you might be having problems, okay? So take a look at it, check it out. It's a new thing coming down the pipeline. You wanna be aware of it.